All right, welcome back to the shop here in Canterbury, New Hampshire. I'm glad to have you hanging out with me for a little while. It's been, uh, it's been those hard last days of winter for some reason, but the bright sun is shining and the sap is running and the maple syrup is being boiled off and it's just a great time of year of transition to spring. So, hey, it's a good time to be in the shop. And I just want to give a shout out to the group last night, the Long Island, what's their official name? The Long Island Woodworkers. I mentioned that we were with them last night in the chat. So. Woodworkers Association? Long Island Woodworkers. I don't think they have an association no. part back there. They don't really associate, but they're uh, <laughs> Good group. I had a great time last night. We talked about veneering, and I promised I would show them. We took it out of the bag, the one that we actually glued up and put in the bag. We did a little exercise of a nice four-piece match of a veneered top, a mini piece like this. And on the edge, we had solid wood on this edge and this edge. And then on the, the other edges, we went with veneer in the vertical grain like that. And then this is the other one that... I took out. What do you guys think uh, we could make out of these? I mean, this was like... <laughs> really this big was, coasters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for that massive mug. Uh, or they would make sweet little clocks. I mean, they're almost 10 inches in square. And you could see like a cool clock face there. Mm -hmm. um, but that's all I got. Any ideas? Anyway, I'm going to set these aside. And... Bookends. <laughs> Bookends. <laughs> they don't really stand up quite yet. But I'm eager to get into our topic tonight um, where we're going to talk about making ellipses, making the ellipse jig, um, and just the whole idea of an ellipse, uh, working with them. Um, but before we get into it, just want to remind you, if you enjoy this content, please subscribe and share and hit that bell. It helps us with all the algorithm, whatever that is. <laughs> so um, we are going to launch into making the oval top. And here's an example of an oval shape or an ellipse, technically. I mean, technically, I have to look this up in the dictionary uh, this, today because whether or not an ellipse is the same thing as an oval. The technical way is it's an ellipse is an, an oval type shape, and an, an oval is not necessarily elliptical. So even an egg that isn't a perfect shape is, not, is considered an oval shape. However, an ellipse is a more precise uh, shape within the oval family. How's that go? <laughs> if the, the, the math major is paying off right If here. the oval had a family. <laughs> yeah, it's sad that it's been, that I actually studied math that hard. But it, I did pretty well in geometry. That was my main thing. <laughs> the rest I just tell. found my way to get through. Anyway, this is a nice oval top. And I've made quite a few elliptical tops in my furniture career and some small end tables, side tables, um, and dining tables, um, coffee tables. Gosh, it, I pulled out some patterns I had forgotten all about having made. But this I can't is actually... imagine that. You <laughs> forgot about <laughs> I used to wonder how Pug Moore couldn't remember. I like went in, he's just like in his mid-70s, and I go... I pull a pattern off the wall or something. I go, hey, uh, when would you make this? You go, oh, you know, I don't even remember that piece. I'm like, what? I remembered everything because I'd only made like five things at that point. Yeah. Anyway. You were young, too. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but this, this is a pretty decent shape for an oval top. Um, this is not one I've made. I actually was messing around getting ready for tonight. And we're going to make this shape. And I want to show you the jig to make this type of oval top. Now, a couple things to be mindful of when laying out an oval top. 
Um, all right, elliptical top, top technically. Whenever I say oval, I mean elliptical in this, in this case. Um, when you're thinking about it, a good proportion to think about in terms of width and length is make your, your width, the shorter dimension, if you can get it roughly two-thirds of the length, you'll have a pleasing elliptical shape. If you go wider, it's, it's still going to look good, but it'll be, you know, as it gets closer to this being equal to the length, you're getting closer to round. But uh, you're, you're just a big Humpty Dumpty there. But if you make this shorter dimension half the length, it gets quite narrow, and your ellipse at the end gets kind of pointy, almost like a football shape. I mean, you'll still have the round, but you'll get this kind of narrow. To me, it just doesn't work. And in fact, when I've been forced with that type of um, arrangement where the d dimension across was closer to half, I actually cheated it and filled out the ellipse a little more out here, you know, with my pattern. So this, however, is an actual ellipse, and this one is um, almost precisely uh, this shorter axis is roughly two-thirds the long dimension. Let me actually measure this so we know. Yeah, I'm just under 36, like a 35 and 7 eighths. And this dimension, I am 23 and 3 quarters. So approximately 24 by 36. So we're two-thirds with our shorter axis. So that's what we're gonna sh I want to show you tonight is making this type. Now, um, I'm going to show you the, the way I actually would normally do it, and then, I'll, then we'll make a cool jig together. Uh, but it simply, all you need is a stick. And uh, <laughs> there's something about the word stick. It's like as simple and plain a thing as you could be <laughs> and be in one syllable. It sounds so crude and simple. A lot of your tips involve a simple stick. Yeah, there's some of uh, just getting a stick <laughs> and get it done, right? It all comes down to <laughs> when you're a kid. Just get a stick and you can fly that kite. So anyway, I've got a stick <laughs> and I'm gonna, I start out by making a hole in the stick. It's getting pretty complicated, right? But I, I made a hole at the end, 5 sixteenths, and I actually made that on the drill press. That's going to be the hole for the pencil or the line maker in this case. I'm going to actually use this stick to draw the ellipse. Now, I want to find from the center point of the ellipse the uh, half of my shorter axis. Okay, so let's just, let me just measure this here. So yeah, I want to be... I'm going to make that 11 and 7 eighths from that point. Now, I'll throw this rule here. And, oops, dropping nails already. I don't need that. Um, my pencil, that's what I want. Okay, so I'm going to set this. I've got my halfway point right there. I'll just eyeball that in my pencil and I put that right at the center line there and I'll come out to 11 and 7 eighths and if we bring that over I see I've already got a line there and what I did was I centered and I took I want I'm gonna use a nail as my pivot so these are just small uh, brads they're not even and uh, I'm not even sure what they are. I think they're 16, 16 penny. Is that right? I know they're not 18 gauge. 18 gauge. Yeah, they'd be about 16. They're a little heavier than. All right, so I just drilled in per plum. You could do this on the drill press, or you could just eyeball it right in the center of your stick. So then I, I would tap in this point and. I like to snip off the little brad head there, so I end up with a basically a pin. 
don't want this to shoot out at the camera lady, <laughs> even though she's behind the camera. All right, so now we have a pin. That's our pivot point. So if we took a pencil, now to get, this is a 5 16 I needed to beef it up. I sharpened a pencil. Um, you could do this with a pen, too, if you could trust the pen um, to be reliable. And hopefully that's not sticking out too far for this. Uh, but anyway, there's my axis. Now, if I was going to draw a circle, this would be no problem. I would just put it in that center point and scribe my circle. Just go right around. And that's pretty much what a circle jig does. You have your pivot point. You could mount a router out here and just plunge and make a sweet circle right around the pivot point. And we showed that recently in a video, didn't we? What, what do we call that one? Were you listening to me? I was reading something. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Caught the camera lady not paying attention. All right, so... What was the question? <laughs> I'm sorry. You got one chance. <laughs> it's oh, goodness. No, just kidding. I asked uh, if... We did a video recently on making a circle jig. Yes, I uh, put the link to that in the description. It's I knew you were right on top there. of that. Okay. I, I forget the actual name, but they can find it there. Yeah, so that basically showed the jig to make a simple circle. Now, we want to pivot on this axis, or this focal point, you can call it, and that point would swing around. But instead of it just swinging around here, we actually want to get it to come end way out here at the longer, half of the longer axis, okay? So approximately 18 inches out, we actually want to land here. So we're going to need a second pivot point or foci, a focal point. And so it's going to be pivoting on that point. And then we'd love it if we would have a way that we could get it to pivot out here. So Imagine if we just had that second long pivot point here. We'd be sweeping a big arc like this. So we want to be able to transition from this big arc to this smaller point right here when we get over here. So what we need to do to achieve that is get another nail in there at the second pivot point. And I already made that mark just shy of 18 inches out. So let's go ahead and tap that one in, and I'll snip that one off. And there we have it. We've got a nice dual pivot. Now, in order to make this work, we need a right angle for these pins to bear against. And I've already got that here. You see, I've got, I made a nice square template. You can do this out of you know, half inch thick stock, even quarter inch if you, if you like. But I've got a three quarter inch piece of MDF here, which has got a 90 degree corner. And I want to put this down without having to clamp it every time. So one of the little techniques I like to use is take these tiny little 18 gauge brads. And uh, where's my, here it is. I already put a couple in there. I just wanted to show you this. I'm going to tap in the brad about halfway and then snip it off as close as I can to the bottom. Okay, but when you do that, you can't actually get it all the way with these snips, but you leave it sticking up a little less than a sixteenth. So you get this sharp spur, and I got a couple more there, and I did a couple on the other side, and that creates a good way for you to anchor in. So let me. So I'm going to set this right on these lines. I should have mentioned that. I already, obviously, I had my, my template, and then I squared this up, and I found the center line and made some nice square lines. I used the, uh, I used that big woodpecker's square. Man, these things. Um, I know I sound like a commercial again. I'm not actually doing that. One of the things I love about this is this simple little bar right there. Because when you rest it, I found myself like pressing so hard on the 
the long end of this, because that's what happens with typical squares, is you're always thinking about the, the backside falling down if you don't support it. And then I realized, oh, I don't have to do that with this square. And just, it's just resting right there. And you could take a secondary straight edge. By using this, I was able to come up and just go bang and just get our sweet square line right on across. <coughs> okay, cool. so now with those lines established, I'm going to take my little square panel and get it set right on the line and then I, in both directions, lines up very nicely, and then press my little spurs in, and that thing will not move, but my panel will, so what I'm going to do, <laughs> <laughs> ah, there's always something wrong with it. No. <laughs> but, uh, so I'm going to take a couple brads, and I'm just going to tack my panel so it doesn't move anymore out where they're out of the way from the ellipse. And they won't be in the way here. Okay, so that's nice and stable. Now, we'll get back to our drawing here. So now I'm gonna start with that pivot point right on the end there, you see? So it's just hooked around the corner. And I'm gonna get that laying down, okay? Oh good, I can, I gotta extend this just a little bit. This has to be a good three quarters out, the thickness of my material. So now that pivot point is just over the corner, and the other pin is resting against this, the straight edge here, I mean the square panel. So now I'm going to drag this, and while I'm dragging this, I'm keeping both pins against my square. And see, now look at how I'm describing a nice arc. So as I move around, now the other focal point is becoming, is, so I'm, get, I'm elongating because that other pin is going toward the corner now. And it swings up. And just about here it'll fall away. And that's it. So look, we've described a beautiful elliptical sweep right there by just using two focal points. Now we can flip our template and just, we've got the spurs on the other side. We just line it up there. Get it placed. And boom! <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna get that pin set up there. This is my starting point and start sweeping the arc. Here we go. Okay, there I am. I was hung up on the edge there to start with. The number for that woodpecker, I think, is 1812. Um, I'll look at it in a second. Well, we will put a link to Whoops. that in the description. Look, I lost my concentration. I'm no sorry. worries. Excuse me. No, that's okay. I looked Excuse away. Me, professor. No. <laughs> Class, please settle down. <laughs> All right, so, so I've got both pins against the corner board, and I'm going to swing it around. And It's just so intriguing. <laughs> it's hard to keep our, ourselves from getting excited. You're going to have to see me after class, young lady. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No problem. No, this is the one. See? It's 1812. 1812. Like the war. Okay, there we go. Look at that. Nice elliptical shape. Now, wow. what I love about this is I've actually made a number of demi loon tables, and David Lambs, he was the first one I saw use this shape. But this is a really wonderful shape if you want to make like a, a side table. or um, It's like a demi loon. It's not technically a half round, but it's an elliptical shape. They are awesome for like side tables, like decorative uh, type tables off of a dining room or in a hall. They're really great style. So one day I, I want to make one of these and actually make the elliptical apron as well to go with it and we could have a fun time with that. But tonight, 
we're going to continue with the full ellipse, the elliptical top. Don't leave us hanging, please. I know, I know, it's just too much. <laughs> I know. So to do this, you want <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> you want to flip it, and you're going to now use the other quadrants <laughs> and get your spurs anchored. <laughs> All right, a little sassy here I think tonight. I'm going to be in trouble. I get a little sass, okay. <laughs> but it's <laughs> it's okay. All right, so we're going to go against our square. I've got my pencil, and once again, <laughs> we ride along our square. Check that out. Beautiful. Look at I did that one flawlessly. That was good. All right, now we can. I know you're probably itching to see the last one. All right, I'll do it. The repetition is cementing the concept, I'm sure. That's what a good instructor would do. All the way. So we're going to set that pin. And again, oops, my spur didn't anchor here. Real life. Yeah, that's real life. Maybe I didn't get all my spurs in over there. Peter's asking, does this get a different shape than the loop of string and two pins? Um, I, want, I want to show the loop of string. We can test that at the end. Um, but I didn't want to start with that because the string method, I believe it does give you the same, but uh, that we will prove that concept at the end. Um, so there we go. Oh, well, I'm not <laughs> perfect. <laughs> I could keep going. Now, I'm showing you the whole drawing, but you know what? When I actually do this, if you're actually going to make a dining table top, what if you're making a large top? You don't have to draw all four quad quadrants. Quadrants. That's, uh, you really just need one. And so what I would usually do is draw the uh, angle or the cross and then use the square method, but just get one quadrant. But when I would do it, I would leave it straight beyond the center line. So I'd have a straight line and a straight line so that I could route and use that quarter as the, the routing. The reason being is sometimes it's of a large table, you don't want this huge template. You don't need the whole thing because each corner, as you saw, is identical. So you just really need that one. So on the wooden, the actual wood top, if it's a solid top, typically the grain is running the long way. You would, you would lay out with a cross on your top, actually pencil line, and then you could take that quadrant and set up the uh, corner to sweep your arc. Now I'm going to show you one right here. This is a little template that I made. Look at it's got, I took it from the library up in the attic. And this is an example of what I consider a poor oval shape or elliptical shape. It's 28 by 48. So we're not quite to that two thirds. So it was kind of long and notice how it's a little bit pointy here. Now the center line is actually this line here. I cheated this a little bit. I started out with a square, and then I, on the bandsaw, I ripped like an inch off on each side, which is actually right on the true axis line here. That gave, it gave me a little flat out here so that it could start the router and end out on the flat. And then I used this inside corner to describe my ellipse with the same method of the square, except I had these different focal points, one for the long and one for the short. So this is all you need. And then I would match this line up on my actual table, which I have to start out, had to be 28 plus and by 48. And then I would draw it on there and jigsaw heavy to the line. Now the reason I liked a quarter pattern is because one of the issues you have with routing a solid wood top is when you're routing two of these quadrants, your router bit will be spinning into the grain if you're working 
from the top. So uh, if you're working it all from the same side, like if you just went right around a template, you're going to, on this one and this one, that router bit is going to be tearing into the grain. So it's going to leave you some rough edge there, and it may be some bad tear out. But when you make just a singular quarter like this, you can actually uh, flip your pattern, and you can work with the router from the other side of the top. So you can flip it over. So on those other sides, you can always orient the router so that it's actually cutting favorably downhill with the grain. Um, so that's something to think about. Here's another one, just so you can see it. Check this out. This was a, I, I've forgotten I made this one. This was for a table that was almost 64 by, it was 49 three quarters by 63 and three quarters. So this is actually the center line. And so you can see how I did this. I made my, my ellipse here and I went beyond the center line here. So you end up with a nice kind of shape. And this is typically the way I made them. I made them oversized rather than cutting in on that one. And I would draw the line and sweep the pattern just as I showed you a minute ago. Now, when I would sweep that pattern, I would then jigsaw or you could bandsaw very close to the line. And so you'd have to smooth and fare that curve with some hand tools. I'd usually just use like a small block plane and just skim over the high points and then a file and you'd end up with a beautiful kind of surface. So that when you routed on it later, there was very little cleanup time on all four quadrants. You spend considerable time or just, it actually isn't that bad because it's only a quarter inch material. I usually use uh, MDF now, quarter inch MDF. This masonite, this is what I was using back a few years ago. Well, this is probably at least 15 years old. Um, this is a harder, not the best, um, but you can use this type of masonite as well. But cleaning it up, the MDF is super easy. You can fare a nice smooth curve and make sure you've got no bumps in it um, because then the smooth surface here works to your advantage when you get to the hard, the regular solid wood. Set this over here. All right. Now, that was fun, but I wanted to show you another method that I haven't done as much of, but I always have enjoyed um, making a couple of these when I have. Um, and that is the jig to combinate, to work with the router, where you can actually get the router to cut this entire shape in one go around without a reset. And to do that, we're going to use a square panel like this. This will actually be set in the middle, and I'm going to make um, an actual, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure what to call it, like an arm coming out that will, the router will be mounted over here, and we'll have two pieces that ride in these slots here. It'll become clear if you haven't seen it before as we go along. But I'm starting out with a piece that's 16 by 16, so this piece is approximately two-thirds of my shorter dimension, right? Well, actually, it's almost exactly, because 16. So whatever you're doing, you'll need a piece like that if you want to make one of these. Now, this, this jig will actually accommodate a certain range of ellipses. So by changing the focal point of this arm that we're going to make in a minute. But before we can do anything with this, we've got to cut a couple grooves, and for that, we're going to head over to the table saw and use the dado setup to cut these grooves. Let's head over there now. All right. You got an awful quiet. Are you? <laughs> I was listening. I was just so mesmerized by... Yeah, I thought the... I thought it would overtake you after, after a while. 
All right, I didn't clean up my mess over there, and I still got my water bottle here. But this is my um, dado set, and I've got that in the uh, table saw, and I put in enough to make the three-quarter inch wide slot. And I raised the blade. I set them a little over three-eighths of an inch high, and we're going to go with that. Now, I've also set it so that it'll cut a centering cut here. It really doesn't matter if it's perfectly centered because um, I'm going to make one cut there and one cut there. The important thing is that this piece is square. So if you start out with a square panel, just make that nice and square, you're going to make one pass this way, rotate, and then you'll get a nice perpendicular crossing dado slots in this piece. I'm going to turn on the dust collection, and we will go ahead and make this cut. I guess I'll put this on, too. Most of the dust will be captured by the dust collector if I go slow enough. Here we go. go. Okay. Now we can come back to the bench and I'm going to mark the center of each one of these slots. So let's just go ahead and find that center line. So it's three quarters of an inch, so I'm going to come right to the three eighths mark. And go right around. And get these all laid out. So I want I want to make this center line so I can match it up with the lines I put on my panel. Bring it to the three eighths. Tom Mike's asking, I think it's about this board that you're working on. You skimmed with the block plane and you used files. No, uh, that's just to make the template because um, to shape that initial template, the one that I showed you, if I just draw the arc with a pencil like that, or with this stick method, then I jigsaw or I bandsaw to that line very carefully. And then I just fare the curve with hand tools to smooth it out. Then that becomes my template where I use a a flush cutting bearing on a straight cutter to cut the shape on the actual tabletop. And I use that quadrant to cut each of the four quadrants in the solid wood top, always positioning it to be favorable for the grain direction. <coughs> okay, so now I've got that line there and I'm gonna come over here and just square it down each four of the four lines. So this is marking the center of the dado all around. Would you um, avoid tear out if you had a spiral bit, Wade's asking? Um, yeah, Wade, it, it, it helps. It helps. I think you could go all around if you had a spiral, but because that's giving you more of a shearing cut. But you know, I haven't actually used a spiral shearing 
cutter like that on a, an ellipse, so I can't say from experience, but um, you are still cutting into the teeth of the grain, but I think you'd be probably all right to go with it. If you went slow and it was sharp, that's always good. Um, so I would, you could always test it like a little larger, like before you actually do it on the template, you could give it a shot. All right, so now I want to put some spurs in this to keep it from sliding around. So we'll put a, put a few of these guys in here. <laughs> this saves us from, I could tack this right down too, but where's the fun in that? Richard mentioned that you have the felder, which you love, but you don't often use it. What up boy for? Yeah, actually, uh, I do use it. Like, I squared this panel up before you guys showed up <laughs> on the felder. So that's a dead we, on. I think you, you just know that not a lot of people have that kind of machine, and so you. Yeah, I show it, I show it uh, when it feels like I like showing it to show a different method. But um, when it's just a basic project like this, like the dado cut, it's just easier. And I think more people can relate because I know the saws you have at home. But I do want to do special videos on the features and virtues of a slider like the Felder setup. I love that. There's so many very, there's great advantageous things about a slider. But I didn't want to show something that not a lot of people I'm into yet. I feel like it's growing in popularity all the time. Like a lot of the regular cabinet saws are offering the option to get the slider attachment. I know with like uh, saw stop, you can get a slider extra. A lot of good conversation about the woodpecker squares. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They're into that. All right, so. I was just eyeballing and getting all those center lines on my lines there. And now I can press my spurs in and get that anchored down as good as they are, you know. <coughs> so I meant to put this crappy side down, but it's just as good. All right, so now <coughs> we're going to use this. This will be our arm that we're going to attach our router to, and it's going to slide around and track in that slot. So the tracking action is achieved by some cut on here, by some sticks that are going to slide as guides in these slots. So a little earlier I made these, and they fit in there nicely. You don't want them too tight. There's a tiny bit of play because you don't want them to jam up, okay? I could wax them too, but notice they're a little thinner than the slot depth, you, so that it's definitely gonna be riding, this is gonna be riding nicely, and both of them slide nicely in the slots, okay? Now I marked the center of these, and I size them, you have to go to a certain distance where, if you imagine that this is gonna be our pivot, it's gonna be very similar to this. So when this is swinging around, these two sticks now are going to be tracking in the slot. So when it gets over here, you'll have one stick here and one stick here. And you have to make them short enough so they don't collide when they try to make this transition. This will all be obvious in a second, <laughs> but it's, these are going to slide like this and pass each other in the night, like two <laughs> sticks in the night. All right? So I had to make them short enough and in this case, they're just over three and a three quarters of an inch. And I marked the center line there. And now I'm going to make the pivot point. And you could do this with screws, but you know, I think it's actually easier and as effective to do it just with nails, like these same Did 16. Did you say the board dimension is 16 by 16? This one is. It's like, yeah. make it roughly two-thirds of your shape if you were making one. Um, so I'm going to come in here and make just a center line. Eyeball it. It's fine. 
I'm eyeballing it, but it's perfect. Trust me. And then I'm going to take a, uh, I've got a brad point, the same, the same nail. I just snipped the head off in my drill. And I want to make a, so this will drill the perfect dimension here. Not exactly a fine drill bit, but I'm holding it nice and plumb. It makes quick work of going through that little piece of cherry. I'll get this one centered. Same thing. There we go. Now we can transfer our lines. So if we use this, we're going to have our, um, let's take that pencil out. When I set the router in here, when I mount the router to this board, I'm going to put the cutter right up to this edge. So that's actually going to be the, the cutting line right on this inside edge. I'll set it right to that. So if we think of the cutter being, let's see, the edge of that cutter is actually this center of this line. So this is where my pencil was drawing the line. That'll, I'll put the center of that old line there. So I don't have to remeasure these. But I know this one is like 11 and 7 eighths. I'll double check. And then this one's a little shy, a 16th shy of 18. But we'll go ahead and check that too. Let's just double check it. I'll come off the 10. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. Okay. So now these are the points where we want to make a little... Um, we want to attach our blocks. So here we go. I'm going to drill right in again, nice and true. Eyeball that straight up and down. You could do that on the drill press if you're not comfortable with that, but it's probably not a big deal. I should have the camera lady like eyeballing it from the other direction. You could. Oh, I'm eyeballing it. <laughs> She'd say, that's plum. That's perfect. How's that look? Good. It's good? <laughs> okay. Looks plum. <laughs> All right. So there we go. We've got our two points there. Now we just have to assemble this. So let's take our little sticks. Now before I do this with the sticks, I just want to soften the ends so that they'll track in there nicely. So I'm just going to break the ends. The dimensions of those like sticks, Did you say that? Yeah, they're, um, well, I'm three and three quarters each direction on this one. So overall, they're seven and a half, correct? Mm -hmm. So, but you'll know they're too long <laughs> if they're clashing in the middle. And you can just pull them off and cut them a little shorter. Okay, so that's going to make it easier for them to track. And now I'm going to tack them on here. I'll start it down here. Get this one started. There's a comment here uh, that Powermatic and Grizzly make a slider attachment. Nice. People can add. Yeah, they're very, it's safe. It's, and it gives you, you've got, always got a beautiful crosscut sled there. It's, it's better than the crosscut sled in a lot of ways. It's safe for you working to the side of the blade. Now, I'm going to set these all the way. Okay, that's nice. That won't drag on the bottom of my slot. And then I'm going to set this one. So basically, these are the same focal points as we use with our stick. Okay. Now, I'm going to, this is going to be, you got to watch out for these points. Actually, I'm going to put a little piece of tape over that so I don't. Can't wait to see what we're building. So I don't cut my finger on it, <laughs> which I did earlier. <laughs> I did one of these for fun earlier just to work it out again because I hadn't done it in a while and um, I had a little blood on my other <laughs> because of that now, you could snip them off right but hey no big deal I just want to that's more just as no don't don't put your hand there all right so 
when I set this in the jig, I'm, I need to mount my router there. But before we do that, let's just see if it's working before we put the router on. Maybe we got to cut one of these shorter. Um, hold on, let me get that a little deeper in. Okay, that's good. So you got to put the this bar the shorter the shorter distance has to ride you know perpendicular to the shorter angle and then this one will turn straight and you got to kind of just fit it into the jig first find that slot there there it is and there it is so now we're going to mount the router now just look at this pencil hole imagine if there was a pencil there we're going to put the router there in a second so it's going to scribe the line but now instead of dragging those two pins, I've got these beautifully tracking. And look at how that's finding the slot, and it makes that perfect. But instead of stopping, I can keep going. It's amazing. And then I do that one, and I'd swing right around and get that one. And it just keeps tracking beautifully. See them cross in the middle right there? See this? See how that just crosses? And then... <laughs> Right on over. What? Amazing. <laughs> Where do you come up with these things? No, this I, people have done this. I saw this. Somebody done this years ago. I'm going to put a little wax on these. I mean, you could soup it up and shellac them and wax them. Makes this thing crazy. Jeez. Yeah, it was just dragging a tiny bit. I know they're they're small enough, but. Um, And then you can put some in uh, the uh, root, too. Cam said that's like the root 12893. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's know. like every man to himself, like just barely miss each other. New Englanders get that. Yeah. Anyone drives crazy. Yes, knows. I am impressed. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there we go. Right. Now let's get the router attached and make ourselves an ellipse. Let's. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to keep it out for this. I'm going to set the router here. I'm going to use this small DeWalt. You could use a regular size, but this will do the job, so let's do that. And I'm going to set it in here. You could use double stick tape, which I used to use a lot, but um, this one I got a couple holes in it so that I can just run a couple screws through make it fast. And I don't have to clean the glue goop off the tape later. All right, so I'm just resting up against that inside edge like I said I would. And I'm gonna get a couple little screws. One goes through here. And I'll put one in on the other side. And here we go. So yeah, you could get a shearing bit, like they do make down cut and up cut bits. I would try a down cut, you know, so if it, which is a spiral cutter, they're less expensive than the bearing type. And um, you could actually mount this like to the bottom of your workpiece, tack your little cross, and go right around without having to make a template. You know, you can use that option. However, if you wanted that template, you knew you were going to make a bunch of these, and you could just make the template, tack it, and use a flush cutting a bearing bit and go right around. And there again, I do think the sharing one would work nicely. All right. So we've got our router attached. Let's set the depth. We've got to get it back in to our, our exchange on the highway here. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's so great. All right, we so. We that many, many, many Oh, years. boy. Now I got the wax on there. I'm kind of scary. I could go <laughs> off the rails. All right, so I'm going to set the, bring my um, router down till it hits. I'll do this in a couple passes. All right, so I'm hitting right now. I'm touching there, and I'm going to set my depth up about an eighth of an inch. So we'll do this in two shots to get through the quarter. So there's an eighth right there. 
and I'll plunge to that. Now, I'm going to get my gear on. I'm going to turn on the dust collector over here. It'll be pulling out, and I'll go slow. It won't kick it up too much. Let me turn that. I've got to grab that door. Hang on a second. All right. Now, one thing to think of while you're doing this is make sure you're going to come around, but you want to have, because this block is small, when you get over here, let me raise this up a little bit, when you get over here, it's going to want to drop down because there's not as much supporting here. So I'm going to keep my hand over here, not on the nail, <laughs> and come over like that and always keep that pressure out there so it doesn't want to drop in. Here it's not as bad because it's not overhanging, it's fine. But on those long ends, you want to use that method. So let's start over here and make this thing happen. Okay. And where do you think I should stand to get the best? No, you're fine, right there. And as okay. I go around, you can just, okay. you're going to see it take shape, literally. It's just thrilling. I don't want to miss any bit of it. No, you really don't. This is must-see TV. <laughs> All right, here we go. Plunge away here. Turn on my air. I can just hear the applause. What's that? Can't you just hear the applause? Yeah, the applause is deafening. It um, worked. It's awesome. Yeah, it worked. So I would go ahead around, uh, plunge it, and go around again, and then we would release, and trust me, we'd get this exact same shape. You can go deeper and achieve the shape rather than do another one. Um, I want to just mess around with that string for a second here and we'll use the same template. Um, if I want to come back and fix this I'm going to go ahead and just mark the orientation of this so I can just press it right back on the same points. Alright, so let's set this aside. That's cool. Yeah, cool little jig, eh? And then we can pop this off. And the string is a method I hardly ever use. It's a, it's a little more crude. And can you turn off the... Yeah. Rest? I just wanted to let it pull a little more. It looks pretty clear in here now. Okay, there we go. 
All right, so let's do, let's see if we can just make the string thing as a demo and see if it follows the same arc. Um, okay, so to do that, we need the long rule. Where is that guy? I've got to get a few nails here. Show them the beautiful okay. groove there. What's that? See the beautiful groove. Yeah, all right, so we're going to measure the, I'm sorry, we want to come this way, measure the distance here, and okay, we're 17 and 7 eighths strong, like a 30 second strong, so that's the distance, let's see, let me get this straight, okay, Oh, I got to put a nail in there first. I should do that so I don't. So if we were doing this and we didn't have our arc already described, we would say, okay, we want this shorter axis to be whatever. In our case, um, we've got it 23 and 3 quarters. So I'm over here like 11 and 7 eighths. And I'm going to imagine if we didn't already make that, I would be just tacking this in at 11 and 7 eighths on that axis. A little hammer. Okay. Now, you take half of the long distance, which I just said was 17 and 7 eighths, and we'll go from there so you want to set the diagonal right here. From that point, swing it over until you get to the 17 and 7 eighths, like right there, and make a mark. And this is the focal point for the, for the uh, string method. That's one. Now we can measure the distance from the center line. And we're out 13 and just about three eighths. So I'll come back this way, set it there, and let's mark. This is our other focal point. And into those we need to drop, drive a little brad. And where's it? I'll just use one of these. There's our other focal point. That's good. And now I need my string. So I've got the string, and you want to go around your three focal points. I'm going to tie this tight, snugly. This is going to be a trick. I don't know if I can do this. Not much of a knot tire. My fisherman days are far behind me. <laughs> this stuff's slippery, too. All right, hang on a second. I'm going to get it as tight as I can. Can the camera lady put her finger there? <laughs> sure. Right? Seriously? Yes, right there. Hold that tight. <laughs> tight, tight, tight. <laughs> I'm going to sneak this in. Don't let it go. Ready? Okay. Okay, you can take it out. All right, pretty tight. Nice job. <laughs> and I'm going to cut these a little shorter. Don't need those. There. Now that's our setup. And you can see that we've got. I'll bring them up a little bit on the lines. So once again, to do this, you're going to take, you're going to get your distance for your half dimension. Now it's obvious because we've got the ellipse. And then you'll get half of your long dimension, and that marks the diagonal to the line, and that locates your focal point, your focal point, and then tighten your string around. 
And now you're just going to take the pencil. Whoops. Oh, I'm sorry. Shoot. <laughs> I have to get it off that string. I'm sorry. Let me. <laughs> I got to get that. that you got a commercial? Pen, pin out of the way. I got to get another piece of string. Hang on a second. Okay. I should have taken that pin out. Hey, I got a question for you while you're. Okay, that's good. That yeah. Okay. This is going to. I just. Chris could slip asking. Again. If you put a block, this is back on the jig, if you put a block under the router, wouldn't that make it easier to stay in the tracks? A block under the router. A block under the router, you mean? Yes, did I not say that right? Maybe I said yeah, that. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Yeah, a little um, riser block under that. Um, you just have to make sure that it doesn't hit your center block because your your corner is out here. So you could put a little riser block. That's that's a new and improved uh, setup. That would be a good good idea. Um, whenever you can. Insight from California. Thank you, Fred. Yeah, Fred, that is awesome. I know I, I do that a lot. Like I think of it as almost like an outrigger to counterbalance. Um, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna tie more knots this time. Here we go. <laughs> we gotta do this. We've gotta figure this out. All right, so let's go. I'm gonna need your help again. Okay. This time I'm gonna do. Let's see. I came over the front with that one. Okay. It's right. worth it, folks. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Put your finger there. <laughs> I think it's going to be Hold tight. quite revealing what we're going to learn here. <laughs> you, sound, you sound so convinced. All right, stay right there. Don't move. I remember from the last time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you sure know. <laughs> I captured that detail. All right, you, you nailed it again. All right, now I'm going to tie a couple extra knots here because I didn't really do that very well. Maybe I should just leave the slack. And uh, here we go. Okay. There we go. We're going to run into that big knot at some point. In this. All right. So now we take it off this pin. I meant to do that last time. And now this string is going to look at how it's tracking. So we've got it out here. Now, it's a pencil, and you can waver. So that's why it's not the most accurate method. Um, but you know, it gets you close. If you wanted to draw an ellipse, um, you could easily do it. So it's going to slide on the pen on the, I want to keep the, shoot. How am I going to do this? I should have practiced this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me use my finger. All right, so if this is the pencil, I'm not going to do this. I think my pins are a little too low, and my it wants to fall right down the taper of the pencil. Oh, wait, there we go. If I keep the point down. All right, so let's do that. Look at how it's following exactly the other one. Isn't that sweet? I like I'm just inside. Let's do that again just to double check. Yeah, if I keep the point down, I should be fine. Look at that. It's staying just inside that edge. So I forget who asked that question, but yes, the string method. Peter, James. James. Peter, yes. The string method mirrors the other method. And I'm sure we could think about the math of it all. But there we go. We're going to swing right around, keep going. I'm, I'm not steady with my pulling, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you got the idea from that quadrant if you went right around. Pick your option. So that's why it's a little, it's nice in, in carpentry or something like that. It's beautiful because usually you're doing a larger setup. If you wanted to create an elliptical room or, or area, it'd be pretty cool to set it up like that with just those points. And you could go around. But here we're, we want a little more precision. So that's why I like the stick with the two points to draw a really smooth arc and then saw to it. Or you could go crazy and make yourself 
the funky tracking jig. Oh yeah, real nails without their heads clipped off, I think, would be a help too. Yeah, that would help too. Yeah. And a stiffer string. There you go. It no, has I a don't get paid extra, Dale, for, for the offering of my <laughs> secure finger point. <laughs> She's going to want it's, those it's a union, freebie. union wages tonight. It's a freebie. Yeah. So are there any other questions? I think we're good. Uh, there are a couple good pun jokes here. I, don't, I can give you. Bill's asking, can you use any wood or does it have to come from geometries? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're all getting out tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and there was another one. Um, anyway, about ellipses grant. Yeah, someone so. said, oh, yeah, an ellipse sent me an email. I said, yeah, that, isn't that when the uh, sun goes in front of the moon yeah. or the moon goes in front of the sun? If you had a fun to make this, it would be an ellipses grant. No, the sun doesn't go in front of the moon. That's not, an ellip that's not an ellipse. No. The earth goes between so, anyway. the sun and the moon. I think we're good. All right. Well, hey, the moon goes between the sun and the earth. Sorry, I knew I had that. I'm going to get it right. For the, the, the lunar eclipse. Is eclipse. Different. All right. Well, hey, we had some fun tonight. We made a nice ellipse. Next time when we make an elliptical table or an elliptical side table, when we do get to that point, this will be the video that we will refer to to make your template because we won't go through all this again. But we'll make a nice template. Maybe we'll do a swing a little quadrant. That'll be it. But um, thank you all for being here again. This was a fun night for me and uh, to spend a little time here in the shop together on a beautiful March evening. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Be sure, if you haven't subscribed and you enjoy this content, why not? It doesn't, it doesn't bother you at all. It actually just lets you know when, actually you have to ring the bell to know when we posted new content. So that'd be great. And also, if you haven't seen it yet, get over to our website at epicwoodworking.com and see all the, the great stuff we have for offerings over there. We have full-size drawings, project plans, and also in-depth video tutorials that carries you through many different projects. And the list is just growing all the time. So I'm excited also for the next fine woodworking video to come out on the shaker dresser. I believe it's going to be out. I feel like it's coming out tomorrow or the next day. If you haven't seen those, you can see those video series as they're being released at Fine Woodworking's YouTube channel or go to their website and check that out too. All right, so thanks again for being here. Always fun. Look forward to seeing you next week right back here on Shop Night Live. Good night, everybody. Good night, friends. Thank you for all the support. Fun. Have a great week. <laughs>